Hey guys, what's up? Briar Cake here, back with another episode of Let's Build a Deck. Now, as you can see, we got the Jury Han mat out, so that means it's time for another UFS deck. This week, we're going to be looking at Terry Bogard. Terry is the de facto leader of the Fatal Fury team, one of the main mascots for SNK, the company itself, and just all around awesome character to play in the video games. Terry comes at us with a six hand size, twenty nine health. He has the symbols of All Earth and Order. All and Earth are actually the two main symbols for the Fatal Fury team coming up in the Jazzco game set KOF 13, which will have both Terry, Joe, and Andy. He also, the All and Earth symbols are the two primary symbols for the Fatal Fury team. Terry, much like Joe and Andy, also have the first enhance of disc discard one card from the opponent's card pool. Terry's specific ability is, when you discard a card from your opponent's card pool, this attack gets plus X damage, X equals the discarded card's control, only playable during your attack. That's a really good damage pump because most of the foundations, unless they're blocking with attacks, are usually about 4 to 5, to, uh, four to five on the control check, so you're easily getting a plus 4 to put uh, anywhere from a plus 3 to a plus 5 damage pump. On your when they when you discard an opponent's card when it's a foundation, usually it's going to run about a two to a five on actions, a four to a five on assets, sometimes three, and more often than not, if they do block with attack, it'll be anywhere from a plus one to a plus three. But still, it's an amazing attack pump. Terry also has an ability, which is a response. You commit a foundation after you block with a foundation or an asset. You move it directly to your staging area, commit it, and then you get to draw a card. So you get plus, uh, really, um, you don't get a plus or minus because while you lose a card in hand, after you use the ability, you get uh, to draw a card, negating your minus one, and you get... Uh, staging area uh, acceleration uh, just for blocking. A fantastic card. So we're going to look at it. Terry is a stun deck. He is predominantly punches, throws, and kicks. So he doesn't really stick to one whole theme outside of stun. Uh, stun, like we looked at last time, is a very effective thing. He's one. This is one of the primary tools of uh, a couple of the more aggressive decks, as you saw in my original KOF video, Kyo, stun is a very effective tool. Uh, with Terry, though, it's uh, not as heavy in the stun. In fact, the highest stun rating is a plus two, and everything else is stun one, but to offset that, they have some pretty good effects. So let's look at the first attack. We got... Death Valley Faceplant, which comes out and is a rare out of the Tide of Vengeance set. It's normally a Gabrick throw. We run four of them. Death Valley Faceplant is stun one and throw, which is already a good thing, because that means it's going to deal damage no matter what, unless they use like very specific cards to block with. Um, because it only has stun one, it usually is accompanied with an ability. Uh, it is five difficulty three for with a plus two mid block. It is three mid for five damage, which is a pretty decent throw. It has enhance if this attack deals less than its printed damage. You gain two vitality and you get to tap something in your opponent in your opponent's staging area. Uh, a one foundation to be exact. So really, if you go unblocked, they deal five damage and stun one. If they do block it and it does deal less than its printed value, you're really getting stun two and you gain two life. It's actually really good. Moving on, we get Hammer of the Gods. Hammer of the Gods is a five difficulty three check with a plus two high block. He has... Punch and Stun 2. It comes at you for 3 mid for 4 damage. It has Enhanced Discard 1 card. Your attack gets plus X damage. X equals the block modifier to the discarded card. Um, order actually has some pretty decent numbers in terms of blocking, so you're really looking at getting a plus 2 to potentially a plus 4, I believe. 
Um, that's pretty decent. Uh, again, we can use Terry's ability to give this more damage. Uh, its own ability is pretty decent on damage itself, though you are discarding a card, so you're giving yourself a minus one for damage bonus. Oh no, it's not too bad. We run four of these. Next we run Turn Thruster. Turn Thruster is actually one of our kill conditions in the deck. Uh, potentially any card in this deck with some doing is a kill condition, but this is one of our more surefire ways to get a kill. Uh, turn Thruster is a 4 difficulty 2 check with a plus 1 mid block. It is too high for 4. It has the keywords of punch, stun, and it's stun 1, as the combo of stun. So the majority of the, of the attack lineup can actually trigger this combo. The combo is this attack gets plus 4 damage, so it becomes a 2 high for 8. It also has the enhance of this attack gets plus 3 speed, your opponent may tap 1 foundation to cancel its abilities. So it has a built in speed pump and your opponent has to commit something in their staging area, really giving this potentially stun 2. We run 4 of these. Um, this is one of the only 2 checks in the deck, I don't have anything else lower than this card. Checking this card is obviously not a great thing, but because it can potentially end the game right there, I do run four of these. Next up, we have three of the boot. The boot is a four difficulty attack with a three control check. It has a minus, or a plus one, excuse me, a plus one low block. It comes in at three mid for five. It just has kick and stun one. It's actually a deceptively good card. It has a plus one low block, which is amazing. It's four difficulty for five damage, which is really good, and it keeps on the theme of stun. We only run three of these, though. We have other cards in there that do pretty much this, but it also helps us get turn thruster active. It also has uh, plus three speed, which speed will actually determine once we get into the foundations. Finally, we have the only non-stun cards of the deck, Reload. Reload is three difficulty for three. It has a plus two high block. It comes at us four high for two damage. The reason this tack is in here is for its enhance ability, which actually helps feed into Terry's ability. Should this attack deal, it has enhance. If this attack deals damage, your opponent must add one foundation from their discard pile to the card pool. The reason why this is so good is that, as I said just a moment ago, it feeds into Terry's ability of being able to discard from your opponent's card pool. It also adds to your opponent's progressive difficulty while blocking, making it harder for them to block your following up attacks. All in all, it's a good card. We only run three of them because it only keeps on theme with Terry's ability. It also, the four, hot, the four speed will play into a card we'll discuss later on down in the video. But we're only running, as usual, around 18 attacks in this deck. And that's pretty much it for the attack lineup. Next on, we'll look at actions and assets. We are running four showdown. Showdown is a rare. Uh, this deck is a little rare heavy. We will go and discuss a little bit of how to make the deck a bit cheaper. Um, in terms of showdown, it's three difficulty for, uh, with a four control check. It has a plus three mid block, plus three high block. It has response after you block with this card. Commit two, uh, foundations to your opponent's stage unit. Again, we have more committal in this deck. This card itself, get, while not having stun, the moment you block with it, it acts as stun too. It also has response, commit two foundations of your own. After your opponent plays an ability on an action card, discard it and cancel its effects. This is a really good card for that effect because it has action negation. And with stuff like uh, moon coming over the mountain, you'll have to, excuse me, that's a really long, uh, when the moon comes over the mountain. It's a really long title. I tend to forget it sometimes. It stops stuff like this. It stops uh, other really good as actions from being played, which there are going to be quite a few coming up in the upcoming KOF set. Uh, and we will move on to assets. We run two of, you'll have to excuse me, I can never pronounce the name of this card, Ostrenberg Castle Throne Room. Uh, sometimes people just call it People in the UFS community just calls it Amy's House. It is two difficulty for with a four check. It has a plus two low block. 
It is a terrain, and terrains have, uh, first effect is usually static that both players have the ability to deal with. In this case, it says, while this card is ready in your staging area, all block modifiers get plus two. That is a good thing for stuff like Hammer of the Gods, because that means all your control checks when you chuck it gets plus two, and it can give you a significant damage boost. On the negative side, if this is ready during your, while you're defending, all your, all your block modifiers get plus two, making it harder for you to block. To offset this, it does have the committing effect of enhanced commit, this attack gets minus two damage. Um, this can actually be used on Death Valley Faceplant to ensure that they have stun two and you get to gain two. Or you can do it to make a possible uh, damaging attack give minus two to its attack. It's not a bad card. This is an ultra rare. Again, we will discuss uh, some alternatives later on down the road. Probably not in terms of assets. Assets are usually very, uh, usually where they're pretty in the rare to ultra rare range for uh, good effective ones that you run. And we'll move on to the last two. The last two are Sugar and Spice. Sugar and Spice is a three difficulty five check. It has a plus two mid block. It is unique, so we do only run two of them because only one set can run out. It has form commit. Your opponent chooses one foundation in their discard pile and adds it to the card pool. Again, like reload, it works into Terry's ability to feed his ability. It also has a Lily response, uh, which cannot be played because you are not playing Lily. So that pretty much negates anything else on this found on this a asset. Next, we'll move on to foundations. Foundations we're going to be looking at in descending order. So we're going to start off with the threes. We run two Law of the Land. Law of the Land is a promo, but came out in, I believe, the Vincent Gray starter deck for Tides of Vengeance which you can go get at your local hobby store. It is a three difficulty five check. It has no block modifier. Um, it has response commit before this attack's block set. Return this attack to its printed speed. That's very good for when they are trying to come at you with a ridiculously high speed attack and before you go to block, you just reset it. It also enha says enhance commit one foundation changes attacks onto mid. This means if they try to throw an off center attack, Prior to going to the end phase to block, you can reset it to a mid blade, uh, a mid uh, speed, making it able to block easier since most decks have a, a standardly larger size of mid blocks. We only run two of these. We can potentially run three of these. I just like to run two because it doesn't have a block modifier and it's a three difficulty, but it can be run at as a three of. Followed up, we have four together again. Uh, together again is a rare. It is two difficulty with a five check. It has a plus two mid block. It has response before this before you block. That attacks block modifier gets uh, that card before you play a block. That card's block modif modifier gets minus two. This is very good at making things easier to block, making all your potential plus two block modifiers plus zero, all your threes a plus one block modifier. Really good card. It also has a speed boost of enhance, make a control check of four or greater, your attack gets plus one speed. Plus one speed may not seem like enough, may not seem like a lot, but it actually pays off in the long run. And since it's non-committing, you still have the ability to use it again on the next turn, on the next attack, leaving you open for more speed. We do run four of these. Next, we run four liberation. Liberation is a plus two, uh, is a two difficulty five check with a plus three mid block. Um, it has enhanced commit, the stack gets plus two speed. It also has a void response, which cannot be used because Terry does not have void. Really what this is in this deck for is for the speed pump. It's just a straight, quick and easy plus two. Next we're going to move on to 
Best Friends, which we run four of. Best Friends is a plus is a two difficulty five check with a plus three high block. Uh, it has enhance commit one foundation. Your stun rating gets plus, your stun attack gets plus one to its stun rating. So all of our stun ones because stun twos hammer the gods because stun three. Good card to have considering the majority of the deck's attacks are stun save for reload. It also has this stun attack gets plus two damage. Again, it's just straight quick and easy damage pump, much like how Liberation was a quick and easy speed pump. The only thing is, is that it has to target a stun attack. It is still very good, because like I said, out of the 18 attacks, 15 of them are stun attacks. So you're getting plus stun, so you're getting a card that has the ability to give additional stun and give additional damage. We run four of these. Next up, as I was mentioning earlier, some of these cards will do speed, have to deal with their speed. And the reason for this is we look at going undercover. Going undercover is a KOF promo, which can be acquired at your local hobby stores and hobby leagues because they are prize support. Going undercover is a two difficulty five check with a plus three low block, which is very good because we need our low, low blocks. It has first enhance, so meaning before you do anything, this is the first enhance you gotta play. Your attack cannot receive any damage bonuses or speed bonuses for the rest of this enhance step. I know that sounds kind of bad, but you usually want to play it on cards like Death Valley Faceplant, since it's a throw, or reload to force them to block. Because it reload has such a high speed, it plays off into this. If you do, if when you play this enhance, the latter part says if your attack deals damage, your next attack gets plus X damage. X equals the printed speed of this attack. So with Death Valley Faceplant, if you play it on Death Valley Faceplant, your next attack will get plus three damage. If you play it on reload, your next attack, should it deal damage, get plus four damage. The more of most of the attacks, if you do tend to play these, although I really only would say use going undercover on either Reload or Death Valley Faceplant, mostly because Reload will bait a block out of their hand, making them lose a card, and Death Valley Faceplant, unless they block with certain cards that totally negate damage of a throw, it's always going to deal damage, making uh, going undercover trigger. The rest of the time, you just want to use Terry's ability. But going undercover is, like I said, a low block, which is always coveted in UFS decks, more specifically in standard, where they're harder to come by. So we run four of these because it kind of works with the deck, and it can potentially make any card a game-ending attack. Next, we have three Yadamir Restored. Much like going undercover, Yadamir can be attained at your local hobby league, as it is prize support for KOF. It's unique, so we only run three of these. Traditionally, in, when I run unique, attack, unique abilities, I only run two of them. However, since this is a low block, as it is a one difficulty five check with a plus three low block, I do run three of these. It is unique, as I just said. It has enhance, commit, choose one attack in your opponent's card pool. That, until the end of this turn, that attack loses all keywords in its text box or all non-keyword text in its uh, text box. That means it potentially blanks an attack, making it lose anything. Till this, that attack loses all non-keyword text in its text box. Yes, this makes any attack um, essentially just a blank attack. If they have do something with their character, you just follow up with the out of mirror restored, and whatever's in their text box is gone. That is a really, really good card. Next up, we're going to look at Juggle. Juggle is a one difficulty, five check, with a plus three mid block. Uh, it says enhance, add this card to your momentum. Your opponent may add one foundation from their staging area to their momentum to cancel this effects. Um, momentum generation is really not needed in this deck. Um, it's used for its enhance. Your attack gets plus one damage, only playable if there's a foundation in your opponent's card pool. So this feeds into Reload, uh, Austinburg Throne Room, and helps out Terry giving additional damage. You're usually using it for this, the secondary ability, 
over the first. The other reason why we're running four to this is because it is a one difficulty and is easily spammable. Uh, next up, we will look at Into the Sunset. Into the Sunset is a one difficulty five check with a plus two mid block. Um, it has enhanced commit. Your attack gets plus one speed for every foundation in your opponent's card pool. Again, it feeds off reload and sugar and spice. This time, it's a speed pump. It also has desperation enhance, which again, desperation is when you are less than half your total life. Rounded down. It says enhance commit. Commit one st foundation in your opponent's staging area. So you get to tap one of yours, to tap one of theirs while you're at less than half your life. Really good card. Um, again, it's another speed pump. The desperation E is easily usable. Um, and it's got a plus two block modifier as opposed to juggles plus three. And finally, rounding out the deck, we have instability. Instability is zero difficulty with a six check. It has no block modifier, but because it's zero difficulty for six, we run four of these. It also helps out Terry, uh, Terry's stuff because if you destroy this foundation and your opponent plays an ability that would decrease the amount of damage they're going to take, you can cancel that's effects and it's playable while committed. This is a really good card. So that's the Terry deck and thing. It's a stun deck for the long run. Now, as I said before, we can look at some other options because this is a bit heavier in terms of rarity. And actually, Ice Fox, who again, um, nice guy, I've uh, been talking to him on the UFS forums, stated that it would be cool if we sat there and looked at some alternatives to make this deck a bit more accessible. Um, we can turn this into a throw deck pretty easily. Uh, we can replace most of the punches with throws and make this a throw heavy deck. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, we could take out turn thruster and uh, armor of the God, hammer of the gods and turn those into lunar catapult and spinning necro driver. Um, leaving Death Valley Faceplant in there. If you don't have Death Valley Faceplant, uh, you could replace it with uh, Over the Shoulder Throw, which can be acquired in Tekken 6. Um, the boot's pretty common. That's a really good card. It should pretty much go in any deck that it can run it, or any deck that's running either the Kick theme or Stun theme. Uh, Reload, we don't really have anything too much to worry about. Uh, Austinburg Throne Room is an ultra rare. Um, if you want to, it can be replaced with Paul's Gi, which is just a rare, make it easier to get a hold of. Um, Sugar and Spice, uh, alternatively, could also be replaced with Paul's Gi. It's just an ultra rare for a rare. Uh, Showdown can be switched out with Confine. Um, Confine lets you get attack back from your mo momentum, as opposed to what Showdown does. Um, let me think. What else can we switch out here? Um, together again can probably be switched out, though it's kind of really good in the deck. Um, potentially you could switch it out for maybe two weight of the me weight of memory, which would um, be anti-draw when because way the memory says response commit after your opponent plays an ability that would draw one or more cards. You tap something in their staging area, and there's a lot of cards that draw outside the draw step nowadays. I mean, yes, uh, financial troubles is now limited to unique, um, but uh, weight of the memory is still there to offset that. Weight of the memory says response commit. After your opponent plays an ability that would draw one or more cards, choose one foundation in your opponent's staging area. That card is considered to have a blank text box until the end of the turn, and you draw a card. So when they draw, they get something blank, and you get free draw. We only run, why would only run two of these? Because uh, while the effects are numerous, they are often limited to uniques as well. And um, to offset the other one, we would run probably two No Sympathies, which is a two difficulty five check. 
Um, it has enhanced after your ability is negated. Commit two things in your opponent's staging area. So if they have uh, negation abilities, you have the ability to tap more. It also has uh, first enhance, which probably you don't want to use uh, unless you're not going to use going undercover. It says respect. Uh, enhance, commit, discard a momentum, draw a card, and gain two. Only playable during your attack. So you can tap it to draw another card, gain two life. Um, I would run No Sympathy and Way of a Memory in the sideboard. Um, along with uh, three copies of Silence. Uh, Silence is unique. It is three... Uh, difficulty 4 check with a plus 3 low block. It is an ultra rare. So uh, that's in the sideboard for Yada Mirror Restored. Um, it's unique, so you can only have one out and play in, at a time. You can remove this. It says form, remove this card from the game. Name a non-character card. If there's more than one copy of the name card, turn all copies of that card in both players' staging areas face down. Those cards are considered blank text boxes. That is a permanent blanking for a one complete card in both staging areas. So it does have the drawback of blanking anything potentially you have too, but it gets rid of a whole thing in their staging area. Um, it's a good card, but like I said, it's three difficulty four. We can run, replace it with Yadamir Restored, or we can replace it with Fall of the Land. Um, but usually silence sits in the sideboard along with no sympathy and weight of a memory. The deck has quite a bit of blocks out of the total of 59 cards plus character. 53 of them have blocks, meaning 6 don't. That's really good. The blocks are pretty accessible and easy to do. Um, most of them are plus 3s, and that's pretty good. Plus 3s, plus 2s, plus 1s. You don't have really too many bad blocks. The deck itself is a all range deck. You can rush pretty quickly with ter with Terry's ability. You can stay late game because of the throws and because of some of your effects. Uh, mid game, the deck is just fine where it is. This deck has a little bit of everything. It more focuses on committing your opponent's staging area while doing high uh, damaging attacks. It does have some damage negation. It has some control elements like uh, reload uh, into the suns or uh, juggle and sugar and spice by clogging their card pool. So it's a pretty all-around deck. It's just a bit rare heavy. So that is Terry Bogard. Terry Bogard, the one I showed you guys, is actually a promo. It is a foiled card that you could only get by going to Gen Con or winning a national level event or a regional level event, I believe. Um, Terry will come out again uh, actually this month, or actually next month. I keep forgetting we're still in June, since KOF potentially drops in July. Um, it will be non-foiled, however, but it will be the same Terry we just discussed. Terry is probably one of the better cards in the set, in my opinion. I highly look forward to playing more of his stuff, which we will go back to Terry once the new K uh, KOF cards come out, because you can easily switch out uh, a couple of the car attacks in this deck for Terry cards. But we'll look at those when the cards actually come out. So that's it for this episode of Let's Build a Deck with UFS. In two weeks, I'll be coming back with the, one of the founding fathers of Kaio Kung and Ryu as we look at Mr. Karate. So I'll see you guys in two weeks for more UFS. Hey guys, Ready Kick here. Just wanted to say thank you for watching. Please leave all comments and criticisms in the comment section below. Your feedback helps me make this little show better. Also, please remember to go to my blog, totaljusticegaming.blogspot.com, and also hit the Facebook page. Uh, like it and let me know that what you guys think. Uh, also, the Facebook page is a place to go where uh, you guys can keep an update with the website. Website's going to be updated as much as I possibly can, about once a week. So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next Total Justice Gaming Let's Build a Deck.